What is up, Flavor Family? It is Bobby and Art coming back at you from the grocery store to talk all about cereals. This was the number one vote. I put a uh, poll on the community tab last week about what you want to see in the grocery store next, and by far the top request was cereal. And like the videos from the previous weeks, I have bad news. 85% of these cereals on these walls here are no-go. They're just basically sugar bombs. But in my research, I did find a handful of really good ones. Let's start here though, at the mass uh, grocery store and show you the ones you wanna stay away from and why. But before we do that, basically what you wanna do is look for cereals that are made from whole grains, have less than nine or 10 grams of sugar per serving, and most importantly, have as much protein and fiber as possible. At least, I'm talking at least three grams per serving because that's what fills you up. That's what makes you feel full and you don't get hungry like an hour later. So if something is low protein and fiber, but high in sugar, you're gonna get hungry an hour later. It's gonna spike your blood sugar and it's bad news. So let's start here with maybe some of the most well-known brands here. Okay. Let's start with Raisin Bran. So, first of all, take a look at the actual raisins in the Raisin Bran. You can clearly see they're coated, like copiously coated in sugar, okay? So that's a bad, bad thing, but I kinda wanna like Raisin Bran. If you look at the ingredients, whole grain wheat, great. Raisins, great. Wheat bran, sugar, brown sugar syrup. So not the worst, I'd say, but the sugars are high. We're talking about 17 grams for a one cup serving. Um, obviously the raisins do have some natural sugar, but there's an additional nine grams of sugar. Fiber and protein are pretty good. We're talking seven grams of protein, five grams of fiber, but it's too much sugar. I just kind of find it funny that if you take a look at the raisin brand, like they do a little better job of maybe hiding the fact that it's not covered in sugar. But if you look closely, you can still see it there. So I'm gonna say no on raisin brand. I'll show you a healthier version later on when we go to the next grocery store. Um, and then something like, over here, Wheaties, right? We all grew up with like our favorite sports athlete on the cover. Right now, Russell Wilson's tossing that football. The thing is, I don't think Russell Wilson is eating this every day for breakfast because if you look at the ingredients here, we got whole grain wheat, good. Sugar, corn syrup, and we're talking only two grams of protein and three grams of fiber in here. Sugar is very, very low, but there's not enough nutrition in here to really hold you over, okay? So that's a, that's a no-no. Right, one cereal that I can actually get behind, maybe a little surprisingly, is grape nuts. I used to crush these when I was a kid. And look at the ingredients. It's just a few. Whole grain wheat flour, so whole grain, malted barley, dried yeast, and salt. Fiber, rockin' at seven grams per serving. And protein, six grams. And it's non-GMO. So this one's actually good, but I know what you're thinking, right? Your little Timmy or your little Erica doesn't like cereals like these because they don't have the sugar, right? It doesn't have the... Uh, the fruit and the yogurt or the honey bunches of oats. That's where I think you could pull a little swaparoo on them. Take a little bit of stevia or take two teaspoons of monk fruit sweetener and splash it over a cereal like this and it has that nice sweetness. They won't even know the difference, especially with monk fruit sweetener. It's a one-to-one -one replacement with uh, sugar versus stevia extract. It's way, way sweeter and you just need a little bit, but I think that's a great workaround to getting kids to eat unsweetened cereals. Um, and then, <laughs> When did anyone think it's okay for kids and people to be eating miniature chocolate chip cookies for breakfast? I mean, it's very, very wrong. Um, whole grain corn it's made with, you don't really wanna be eating that much corn. Sugar, cornmeal, canola oil. So they're using highly processed, highly refined canola oil. Uh, sugars come in at a whopping nine grams, but there's no protein, no fiber in here. This is the kind of cereal that you eat that spikes your blood sugar and you get sick and you get hungry, more importantly, like an hour later. So that's a no-no. In Cookie Crisp defense, it's yes. not like, they're not as good as cookies. So <laughs> okay. it's not like they're well really good. Thank you, Art. Then you might see something like this that looks healthy, right? Shredded wheat here. But here's the problem. We look at it. It actually looks decent, whole grain wheat, but they put BHT to preserve it. Um, a lot of cereal makers stopped using BHT because it's a natural antioxidant preservative, but it does have some negative health benefits. So uh, they switched out BHT for tocopherol. So you'll see when we go through some of these, uh, they have tocopherols to preserve, and that literally is 100% vitamin E extract, antioxidant to uh, help with the preserving. So you wanna stay away from BHT. But something like this does have no sugar and a whopping eight grams of fiber and protein, uh, but we can do better, and I'll show you later on with that. 
same thing. You'd think something like Quaker oatmeal squares, because we think of oatmeal as really good for you. Um, but there's an ingredient here, take a look, that I don't like. It has maltodextrin. We've talked about this in past haul videos. Maltodextrin is a preservative, and it helps food stay longer on the shelf or make it creamier. The problem is maltodextrin is really bad for your gut bacteria. Um, I will say that the protein is pretty good. The fiber could be better, but it does have nine grams of added sugar. Nine grams is over two teaspoons of sugar. Um, we eat in this country 19.5 teaspoons per day. The AMA recommends that we only do seven. Sorry guys, but you really aren't supposed to record without the- Oh, okay. We're about to get kicked out. So let's actually go to another grocery store uh, that actually has many, many healthier options and not these monster bags of cocoa, whatever that you know shouldn't be eating. Um, in the meantime, just wanna plug the book one more time. Uh, in our new Keto Meal Prepping Cookbook, there's a whole chapter called Wakey Wakey Eggs and Bakey. And if you get tired of eating the same kind of things or the same egg dishes on keto, try some of the recipes in the book. We have an amazing spinach and feta keto fat bread muffin. Uh, Desi has a recipe for everything bagels that are low carb. Uh, shakshuka with cheesy pita bread. We have these Starbucks uh, egg bites. We have a mini meatball breakfast hash. And then my favorite one is this one, the uh, sausage McMuffin sandwiches that are my version of uh, the McDonald's ones with coconut chia seed pudding and uh, bulletproof coffee recipes. So uh, the Amazon link is down in the description box. You guys, it's been a number one new release on Amazon for over a month now. So thank you so much for the support. If you know someone who needs keto and healthy recipes in their life, spread the word. Thank you so much. Now, let's get out of here before they officially kick us out. All right, new grocery store, Spice Girls rocking on the intercom. You know we're in for a treat here. And we actually are in for a treat because there's so many cool series here that I cannot wait to share with you guys. Um, let's start with this, Barbara's Puffins. Normally, the rule is, if there's a cute mascot on the uh, box like this, it's a no-go. But this one is actually a go. Barbara is doing it right. Five grams of uh, fiber, three grams of protein could be higher, but only five grams of sugar and really decent ingredients a uh, whole grain oats we got uh unsulfured molasses and if you want to get a little sweet in there to, for your kids what's so cool is that even with the peanut butter it's all natural peanut butter flavor which is not the case on some of the pb ones i saw at the other store pay very close attention when you look to serving sizes because this puffin is three quarters of a cup this one is one cup for a serving size art and i saw one in a third cup at another one so when you're counting the fiber and the protein and the sugar, pay attention to how big the cup size is. I mean, Art, would you ever have one serving of cereal with just a half a cup of anything? No. No, we're all doing at least a cup to a cup and a half. But Barbara's doing it right. If you're talking about like straight up, like right as rain, <laughs> Art's getting jiggy over there, you guys. I mean, they blast the music here in Old Fit. Um, Alpin Muesli. This stuff is so clean. Look at the ingredients, you guys. Whole grain oats, whole grain wheat, raisins, no sugar added, zero uh, additional sugar. All the sugar comes from the raisins. We're talking about a whopping eight grams of protein, seven grams of fiber. This is one of those uh, cereals. You can put a little bit of monk fruit sweetener or a little bit of Stevion for your kids. This is gonna fill you up and not make you hungry to like 11 o'clock and bum rush those donuts in the office. Sticking in the awesome aisle here, Ezekiel. Um, we all know they can make that sprouted bread that we love, but they make really good cereal with sprouted grains like barley, millet, sprouted wheat. Why is it important to be sprouted? What's the whole deal? Sprouted grains or sprouted germinated grains have more nutrition and uh, digest a lot easier. So it's a lot better to eat sprouted grains when you can. And any of these, the golden flax, the cinnamon raisin, they're all super clean ingredients that really the only amount of sugars that come from the cinnamon raisin version of Ezekiel is from the raisins themselves. They're not coated in those crystals of uh, white refined sugar like they were over at the uh, raisin bran aisle. Um, what else we got here? <clears throat> Let's, oh, probably my favorite gluten-free cereal for all my gluten-free friends out there, Love Grown. They make a bunch of different kinds of cereals that are made with beans, so no grains at all. Take a look at it. It's navy beans, lentils, garbanzo beans. Um, the sugar on this is not bad. We're talking about seven grams for something that is uh, bright and looks like it's sugary. The protein and the fiber could be a little higher, but Love Grown makes even plain ones over there. I would highly recommend that. Nature's Path, 
fantastic. All, once again, whole grains. Um, and you'll see when you read this, all the good brands use tocopherols. And once again, that's the uh, antioxidant preservative. We don't use the other one that is bad for you, the BHT. Um, and this one has organic sunflower oil, so it's not the highly processed one. And then let's go over here. This brand right here is fantastic. This is Arrowhead Mills. Organic spelt flakes, even the maple buckwheats are delicious. You can use any sugar at all. They're using fruit juice concentrate in the form of apple or pear, and it only has two grams of sugar. That's amazing, right? The fact that they're going above and beyond and using fruit concentrate is amazing. You could get a little more fiber and protein. There's only three grams, but that's really, really good stuff. Um, and then if we go to the maple buckwheat that has the gluten-free, because buckwheat is gluten-free. So this would be a great cereal for gluten-free people. And sometimes you will see a cereal where the ingredients are gluten-free, but it doesn't say gluten-free on the box. That's because it's processed in a facility that has gluten flying around everywhere, so they can't certify it. Whereas like, they do certify the Cheerios here as gluten-free, but I, I kind of almost want to approve uh, Cheerios. We look at the ingredients, whole grain oats is great, but then they're using cornstarch in there. They're using GMO cornstarch, which is not the best. This is a fantastic brand right here, Cascadia Farms. Um, I would be careful, you gotta read the ingredient because this one here, the Cinnamon Crunch, has maltodextrin in it. I saw that in an ingredient in the other grocery store. Maltodextrin, once again, is that preservative and it's not very good for your gut flora and your gut bacteria. So this one is a no-go, but if you stick with the other ones, like Cascadia Farms Raisin Brand, or multi-grain squares, then we see there's no maltodextrin in here. And it's a bunch of whole grains. We're talking six to seven grams of fiber and protein, um, and sugars are under 10. So once again, keep in mind serving size. If you go under 10 grams, I'm totally cool with that. Now, Art, which is your cereal of choice? This one, right? That one. All right, this falls under the category of colon blow for me, because if you read the ingredients, dude, a one and one quarter cup serving has 12 grams of, of protein, 13 grams of fiber. This is like, if you eat two servings, do not stray too far from the toilet bowl because this is pretty, pretty good stuff. Any of these. It's cheaper at other places. It is cheaper at other places, very true. All right, so what other cereal is good? Um, the other ones that low, are really- Low sugar, high yes. fiber. Yes, well, low sugar, high fiber. Uh, this is one of the best ones right here, check it out. This is about as clean as they get. Look at the fiber in there. We got seven grams of fiber, well, that's pretty good. zero that's sugar. Um, I mean, it tastes clean. It's a little bland, but if you put a little bit of like monk fruit sweetener, I'd try. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, I would also say that pretty much any of these cereals by Kashi are super high quality. Just a couple ingredients, including whole grain wheat, very minimal sugar. Now, if you're wondering, are there any low carb keto friendly cereals out there? The answer is like slim pickings. Uh, there is one available online. I brought the bag with me here called Julian Bakery. This is expensive. Two bags is about 23 or 24 bucks, but the ingredients are amazing. Uh, it's more of a granola, but look at the ingredients, you guys. Everything's organic. The key to this is they use uh, digestive resistant prebiotic tapioca flour, but tons of fantastic ingredients. Only two grams of net carbs per serving because there's so much fiber in here. Uh, monk fruit is the sweetener, so I wish I saw that. I wish we get to the point where more sweeteners were monk fruit and stevia, but I'll put the link to this down below. This stuff is really, really good, even though it is pricey. And there's a couple other brands that are low carb. I'll put those down in the description box. You pretty much can't find them at the grocery store, only online. All right, let's talk about oatmeal really quick. If you're gonna do it, you want steel cut oatmeal. Uh, it actually has more fiber and it's lower on the glycemic index than rolled oats. The problem is steel cut takes a long time to cook. I would much rather grab a packet of this Bob's Quick Mill, a Bob's Red Mill quick cooking steel cut oats. It says seven minutes on the box, but Art, I cook mine about 17 to get it the way I like it. Yeah, still it's much quicker than the traditional one. Um, just be careful if you're buying the ones that are in here, it's going to be rolled oats, which is fine because it's portable and convenient but don't buy the ones that have tons of added sugar and tons of mix-ins. Go as basic as possible. If it has sugar, it should come in the form of fruit, not from sugar. Okay, that is it, you guys. I think like granola should be a separate video uh, because there's a lot to talk about there. But in terms of cereal, once again, 
as low in sugar as possible. If you want sugar, add your own in the form of honey or monk fruit or stevia. As high as possible in protein and fiber. That's what fills you up. That's what satiates your hunger and gets you through to lunch. Um, avoid stuff like rice and corn in there. That really is filler that doesn't have much nutrition at all. Stick to the whole grain oats and wheats and other stuff like that. Um, but I'll put a list down below in the description box of all the good ones and all the bad ones you want to stay away from. And I just caught out of the corner of my eye here the alternative milk section, which was the number two requested video when I put the poll on the community tab of YouTube. So coming up maybe next week, Art and I are going to hit all of the alternative milks that come in the middle aisles and the refrigerated ones. I call them alternative milk, but Art calls them milks. Milks are not milks. Let us know what you want to see next. And more importantly, share this video. Sharing is caring. Uh, we got two more review and haul videos going down below us right now. But Art and I will see you really, really soon. Until then, hashtag keep on cooking. Mad love and peace.